I'm sorry. I like to make room for the Holy Ghost, don't you? And he changes the message sometimes. But I've got to tell you, this morning I woke up and I was contemplating the week we've had. Before we start, I just want to pray for Norm and Jewel. Can we do that? As a group, and for Peter Jervis, my mate over in Port Lincoln. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord. We hold up Norm and Jewel. We just thank you that you are life and breath to them that every part of their body is being healed and set free by you, that all the pain that's in their bodies is leaving even now as we speak, that we proclaim blessing over their bodies and blessing over their lives today as a church. Amen. And Father, we expect an answer from these blessings we're sending because we know that you watch over your word to perform it, Lord. I want to give you honour and glory, Father. Honour and glory, Father God. I thank you that their faith is remaining strong and they are being strong and courageous. For they look at the road the doctors are telling them they have. It's a long road of recovery, but we can shorten it as we speak. We can shorten that road of recovery, that it will be quick and it will be swift and it will be miraculous. Amen. We want to thank you because the blood of Jesus has already paid the price for them. The blood of Jesus has already made that divine transfer. His health for their sickness, his health for their disability, his health against all odds. Miraculous, Father. These are good terms for you, Lord. When all else seems impossible, it's when you can work, Lord. It's when you work best, when you reveal your glory. Father, reveal yourself in that hospital through Jill and Norm, in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen. actually I was there with him yesterday morning, <laughs> and Normie Normie is into spiritual warfare, has been, he's one of the, our prayer warriors, and um, his doctor is a Hindu with the red dot. <laughs> <laughs> and I talked to the doctor, and, I, and uh, he said, you know, he's healing now, we've got him stabilised, he's healing. Now they put a tracheotomy in the, into his throat to help him to breathe because he had a hard time the last two or three days and they had so many operations that they had to do on him so they kept him in, what do they call it, with breathing, yeah, Incuba intubated, induced, whatever, induced coma. Anyway, they kept him in that, but yesterday he was alert. I, I went and prayed for him earlier this week while he was in the coma. He kept snapping out of the coma when we go and talk to him and his nurses were trying to say, look, you're getting him too excited. <laughs> but all I did was speak the word of God. I just, I got hold of, you know, the Lord is your shepherd, you want for nothing, Normie. You know, like, start speaking actual words. So that word God just uses. I want to tell you, he uses your word even if it isn't word for word out of the book. <laughs> Do you realise that? You are a living word now, every one of you. And that's why he can use us. This, this week we had a, a fraternal meeting here. Do you know what that is? Frat, uh, fraternal brothers, brothers and sisters gathering together. All the pastors from Gould were gathered here on what, Thursday, was it? And um, we, we had a little toing froing with them last time. <laughs> <laughs> because we're a little bit radical for their thinking. But all we do, we allow the spirit to move. And last time, we were just setting some things straight in, in regard to confessionals. And, and, and when people come and confess their sin to you, that's it, it's done with, it's finished. It's a moral law that's actually dealt with, something lifted off people's lives. And we are entrusted as God's people to be people who can release forgiveness. Amen? That's who we are. So when people come and, and, and speak a word and they want to get dobbed in, the, the, the pastors, one woman said, well, you know, there was a victim. And I said, yep, there certainly was, but he's not going to complain, he's dead. <laughs> and um, this woman took umbrage and she said, do you believe in the Catholic confessional? I said, no, I don't. I believe in the biblical confessional where Christ says, if you are faithful and true to confess your sin to him, he is faithful and true to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Finished at that point. Well, she was against what we said and spoke verbally. 
But I think something happened to her. God talked to her, <laughs> spoke to her. And she actually confessed on, was it Wednesday or Thursday? She confessed that what she thought was right is not always right. <laughs> that our thoughts aren't set in cement. That God can cut through those thoughts. But the word of God stands. And the word of God does stand. We're now to use love, release love. And, um, and they, asked, they asked some things. They asked some leading questions. They wanted to know how we heard God and how we discerned when it was his voice because all these questions are coming up right now where people think they should be doing one thing and don't listen to the Lord. They actually go and do what they think should be done. Their opinions count for nothing, I've got to tell you. Even your opinions of the word of God counts for nothing if God doesn't quicken it to you. If, do, if God does not quicken the word to you, it doesn't count for anything. It's living word that God wants. He doesn't want the letter of the law used as a hammer. <laughs> he wants people to be forgiving. Love covers a multitude of what? Love covers a multitude of sin. Isn't that amazing? And, and this is what Julie, Jilly's learning <laughs> in hospital. She said she was, um, she was going under the operation and she had a surgeon teaching a young novice guy in the operation and the novice guy dropped something <laughs> and she said without even speaking the surgeon the main surgeon just about killed him with his eyes he went mm. <laughs> and she saw this while they were trying to put her under and uh, and she said this she said she actually saw evil coming out and hitting that kid and just rendering him useless and so she said, I guess he's never made any mistakes as he was learning. <laughs> she spoke out. <laughs> <laughs> and what she saw, she said she saw in the spirit, she saw life coming back into this kid. And she said, Raph, she said, I look, I learned such a lesson. She said, love conquered evil. Love conquered evil. Good on you, Julie, you're preaching today. <laughs> But that, that's exactly what's happened to her. And, and she's going through the hospital and she's yelling, God made you all. He loves you all. She's, she's in, the, in love with God, right, in the midst of all this pain. And they discovered another fracture in her spine yesterday. They'd been trying to turn her over. She was in agony. And they found that there had been a cut right across the spine. And it, so we've got to pray for healing for that, to knit. Amen. That that spine would be knitted today, and we would, even miraculously, that it would shock them at the speed that her spine is being knitted together in Jesus' name. Amen. And we bless Jill and Norm today, and we bless the doctors who are helping them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to share about that today. <laughs> I think we're getting there. In, in the worship, we were singing songs that spoke of God's word being enacted. The, the battle's his, it's not ours. When we bought this lot, we had that problem, that we had someone give money into the place and they want to take it out. <laughs> and it wasn't a small amount of money, it was uh, $40,000. And um, I can remember standing in my kitchen when I got the letter, he called it an investment after we'd spoken about these things being irrevocable, you know, like if I give something to the Lord, it's given over. It's irrevocably given to God. It's not to me. I don't, I've got to tell you, I don't want your money. <laughs> but the work needs money to keep going. And I've never had to ask ever for money because I've got a God who supplies me every time. So I ran to him and I've learned this is the lesson is to trust God in everything. So I ran to him. I remember standing in my kitchen saying, Lord, What's happened? And he spoke these words to me and he spoke them audibly because I needed an audible speak that time, okay? And these pastors asked me this week, how do you hear clearly? I said, well, for him to speak audibly to me is rare, but it has happened a number of times and it's only because of my deafness. It's only because I'm stubborn moving in a different direction, I'm not listening. He has to get my attention. 
So I'm worried when he speaks to me audibly. Most people want it. I've got to tell you, I'd worry if he's speaking to you audibly. It's because you're deaf. <laughs> and, so, and he said to me, he said, this battle is not yours, Raph, it's mine. When that man wouldn't take the money out. And I've got to tell you, it just gave me such a peace right throughout the battle we had. An incredible peace because God's word was spoken to me. And so he gave it to me again. Because that's what I asked. I said, Lord, if you've done it once, you can do it twice. And if it's not my battle, let's just pay him out and let's just get rid of it. And we did that. A beautiful man of God came up to me one day. Actually, it happened twice. I ended up within that week. I was praying for $40,000 to come. And I'll never forget, the first young man came up to me and he said, oh, Raph, I've been praying. Now, I didn't ask the crowd. I didn't ask the people for 40000 I didn't even tell them we had a problem with it. Yet a lot of them knew that we had a problem. But all I, I can remember asking God to replace it. And a young man came up to me while I was going to the lawyers. These guys were taking us to court. And we're going to the lawyers, a Christian lawyer, and I'm wondering what we're doing there. And in the midst of it, I get a phone call where the young man calls me and he says, Raph, he said, God's been speaking to me, can I see you? I said, mate, I'm busy right now. I've got a, an appointment. He said, um, he said, I've got to see you. God's been speaking to me. I said, well, I'm in town at the moment, mate. I said, I've got an hour before I go into a meeting. I'm praying at the Botanic Gardens at the moment. He said, well, I'm around the corner. He said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Comes in and he drops a $40,000 cash check in my hand. I think, you beauty. And God says, no, don't touch that. No, but I've just been praying for it. You know, when you pray, <laughs> there are lots of ears listening. <laughs> there are lots of ears listening to this. And the Lord said, don't touch it. And I said, mate, you must be praying for someone, but it's not for me. Take it back. He tempted me, didn't he, three times, niece. I got angry in the end. I said, mate, I said, I need exactly that amount. I've prayed for that amount, but that is not for me. Most of you would grab it thinking, that's, oh, that's God. <laughs> but I want to tell you, it wasn't for me. I said, go and pray and find out who it's for. Generally, they come to me to pray to find out who it's for. I didn't want to know who it was for. <laughs> All I knew was I'd prayed and God was saying to me, that is not yours. And I was listening. Vampy from India was here that week. And that kid came up and he was praying in the hut there in front of the cross. And I said to Thampy, I said, Thampy, I said, why don't you go pray down the block? <laughs> we had a lot of people turn up at that place. I didn't know the, the boy was there. I said, why don't you go pray down the block? And Thampy's a, 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 he's an apostle. He's a true apostle. Started with nothing, he now runs 4,000 churches in India. You stop and think if he's an apostle or not. He, put, he set them in place. And he, he comes over, next when he comes up, he says, Raph, he said, the new Bible college has just been paid for. <laughs> $40,000, that's where it was supposed to go. And I'm saying, well, okay, Lord, that's fantastic, where's mine? <laughs> You know, you've got to be real. And about a week later, a beautiful old man came up to me. He said, Raph, here, here's $40,000. He said, there's no hook on this. Deal with it, whatever you need to do. And all we did, we kept blessing and kept listening to the Lord. I want to tell you, every time you pray, you get an answer, one way or another. You may not like the answer. That's the only problem. <laughs> You may not like God's answer because he might be putting you through something to teach you something. He may be allowing circumstances to change you. But all I know is every time I pray, I get an answer. I mean, even this week, we were working together, weren't we? And in the morning, we had two answers to prayer just like that. It was as quick as that? As quick as that. Things that we were just struggling with in, in the morning, we just came into agreement and within 20 minutes, I reckon, it was, it was as quick as that, wasn't it? Within 20 minutes, the answer came. God's been speaking to me. He said, there's new things coming, and Raph, I want you to start listening to some of these things. Now, I don't know who gave me this book. 
but they lost it amongst my rubble. <laughs> and I reckon this is... Did you give this to me? Did you? It's the most wonderful book. I, I was in Switzerland you know, a few years back on a, on a job that God gave me to do. And it was to release a radio station that was translating the gospel all through Europe. And it was being translated from English to every language in Europe. And it was a with a lot of missionaries who were coming in for respite. There was another place in London where Nice and I stayed, was similar. Um, what was that called? Uh, Highbury, that's it, in London. And this is a story of a place in Wales, the UK. And this is, this is endearing to me. I was born in Wales. I was born in Cardiff, Wales. And... Um, as I was reading this, I was reading about a man who was in ministry who happened to be running this place in Wales. And he was, um, him and his wife had been given this, this place. Um, I'll just read you the first few words. He said, I was desperate despite a series of miracles that had enabled my wife Daphne and me to become directors of a beautiful Welsh Christian retreat centre. He said, I was frightened that I'd made a mistake as I thought about it. I realised for the first time in maybe 35 years, several months had passed during which I hadn't clearly brought somebody to the knowledge of Jesus. He was getting a bit stale, this man, when the call of God was on him. He said, I believed I had a calling on my life to bring people to Jesus. So what was happening? I've got to tell you, in your life you're going to have transitions and times when God is either going to take you to a different work, a different thing to do, 
or he's going to set your, reset your walk so that you're actually in line with what his word is saying to you. Amen? He wanted to know about it and he was getting itchy and he wanted to leave the place and um, he was ministering to businessmen. He was comfortable with what he knew, with what he knew what to do. But he was getting disgruntled because he hadn't seen a soul saved in, in all those months. And he just kept saying, it's just no good. I can't stay here any longer. I need to immerse myself in the everyday lives of people without a Christian faith so I can just be me and share my faith with them. He was an evangelist, obviously. That was the call of God. He says, Daphne, petite and blonde, is always full of incredible wisdom and insight. This is his wife. Thank God for an incredibly wise wife. <laughs> <laughs> she just calmly looked at me and said, hmm, well, if that's how you feel and you feel so strongly, it's about time you told God about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good word. <laughs> good word. Eh? Does that bring home? <laughs> I've been, I've been in those positions many times. And Denise soberingly brings me back to reality. <laughs> Is that right, Phil? <laughs> Concur. Suitably rebuked, I retreated to the upstairs office to pray. Fortunately, I wasn't aware that her internal, that her internal response was actually, well, you can leave if you like, but I'm not. <laughs> That's a good wife. Submissive. <laughs> I'm not making enemies. <laughs> Praise God. But I've got to tell you, that was a wise woman. <laughs> Amen. Suitably rebuked, he, really, he went into his upstairs office. Lord, I need to be spending time with people who don't know you. I can't survive unless I'm doing this because this is what you made me to be. This is what I am. Somebody who introduces people to you, who connects them or fans the flames. And the pent-up emotion surfaced in my jumbled words, how can I be whom you created me to be unless I'm sharing you with those who don't know you or seeking to heal the hurting or fanning flames of passion in those who are on the fringes of walking with you. Quite a book, isn't it? Well, stuff started happening. <laughs> He said, um, he ended up with a couple driving up his driveway and uh, he showed them hospitality, made them a cup of tea, showed them around the place because it was a retreat. And they said to him, we don't know why we've come up. And they read Christian retreat and they said, we're not Christians, but we're just drawn to come up and have a look at what you're doing here. And as they went through, he made them a cup of tea, gave them the tour around the place, and then took them into the chapel. And um, he said, you know, we have a tradition of blessing people here. Would you mind if we bless you before you leave? And I said, certainly. So he prayed a blessing over them. He prayed a blessing that they would come to know Christ. And then they started weeping. And so he left them there and he walked out and when they came out they were totally saved, totally transformed. They met with God in that place. He didn't have to ram any word down their throat, he had to do nothing at all, just the presence of God. Now I've got to tell you this place here has a very, very, very strong presence of God when people come on this land. I can't tell you how many testimonies we've had of people who've just come on the land and been touched as they've driven through the gates. I've had people who've had Crohn's disease healed just driving through that, through that gate. We've had pastors get on their knees on the block repenting of God as they've gone past. They've been drawn to stop here. No one touching them, no one doing anything. And he said he said he started to realise that all of a sudden an influx of people were coming in even if they didn't know why they were going in there. One man said he'd had his licence for 40 years but the car turned itself in. <laughs> 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 
That's revival. We look for revival, but I want to tell you that's revival. When God is doing something, Bricky wanted something happening today, and I believe he's going to do something today. He wanted to sense the anointing of God strongly in this meeting for the day. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Well, I want to tell you, God is transitioning this place. And I want to do something, and I want us to do it corporately so we can all see the miracle and all join in on the testimony that it will become. We had the tent here. I gave it away about three years ago, the miracle tent. We, had, we did the miracle tent for 14, 15 years, or was it 16 years? We did it for a long time. And it used to fill up. If, how many people had, had ever been to that tent? Well, I had one guy come in, Chris Bowie. He's over in, in, uh, in Victor Harbour. He's, he's a council officer. He thought it was a wine-tasting tent. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was new wine. He just didn't realise it. It was new wine. <laughs> he came in for the wine tasting and the place was full of people who we were preaching and he ended up giving his heart to the Lord. Today he's following God with all his heart. God just drew him in. This guy had people keep coming and he had one man come in and he said... Um, he said, this guy turned up, he said, um, amongst the myriads of people that just kept turning up, this guy drove in and he's the one whose car turned into the drive. <laughs> and he said, I can't believe it. He said, I don't know why. He said, but I was, we were drawn here. And then he started telling some crude jokes, some pornographic jokes. And the minister was about to shut him up. And God specifically said, shut up, don't say a word. <laughs> All the goody two shoes are going, oh, that can't be right. That's not God's voice. <laughs> well, I've got to tell you, the pastors were just as shocked this week here, wanting to know whether it was God's voice or not while we were speaking. Is that right? That was, was that their question? <laughs> I want to tell you, God speaks in some mysterious way sometimes, and it's not what you think. The Lord told him to shut up. <laughs> he didn't want it. He wanted to shut this man down after the first joke. Then he spoke another one and his wife was highly embarrassed. By the third joke, he was about to grab him by the throat and throw him out. <laughs> he wanted to get rid of him. So he thought, come on, I'll take you for the, the tour. And his wife said, yes, I like that. And he wasn't particularly interested and he said, I was just about to tell him to go wait in the car then. <laughs> he said, but when they came into the chapel, he continued and said, we have a tradition of blessing in this house. Would you mind if I bless you both? As soon as the man walked in the door of that chapel, he broke down in tears asking God to forgive him. How could he possibly forgive a man who had sinned so much? And it was sovereign. He said one of the main things in what he did was that he would leave them alone with the Lord. As soon as he prayed the prayer of blessing, he would leave them so they wouldn't depend on him. And God's been speaking to me about that. He said too many people depend on you when you pray for them. He said I want you from now on just to lead them to me, let me do it, and we're now going to start seeing an incredible outpouring of God in this place just by blessing people. Can you believe for that? Yes. Yes. He's been putting that in my heart a lot lately and all of a sudden he's revealing it to me in black and white and, and in a practical manner that our mouths are for blessing and not for cursing. Too often we judge people and we open our mouths and we put a huge weight on them rather than releasing them. I got one word for the church, please. Shut up. I like that. I mean, it's in the deaf language, it's like that. <laughs> Shut it up. And only speak what he tells you to speak. Because I know the damage we do as Christians. We have power in our words, 
the power of life and death. And all I know is God wants to harness our mouths for life. There's so much happening at the moment. People under attack, accidents. There was another accident in Strathalbyn two days ago. Two elderly ladies. Right. We've got to break curses off roads. We've got to, we're a people who've got power in our mouths to change everything. And we've got to become a church that starts doing that and letting God reveal himself just through the power of our words, nothing else. Amen. I'm thankful he's given me words of knowledge. They're just incredible tools. But every one of you can work in them. And the only reason you don't is because you haven't asked for them. Ask believing to receive. And you'll see it. You'll see it start to happen. Bless people. Don't judge them. Don't pray what you think should happen to them. May you see someone in sin, that guy who telling filthy jokes, he had a filthy spirit on him. <laughs> it needed to be released. The word of God in blessing released him. Amen. The word of God in blessing released him. It's a good lesson. It's a huge lesson. Love never fails. And God wants to harness our mouths for love. Amen. We don't have to do much. We just got to be and let it come out of our mouths. What we put in is going to come out. What's the computer idiom? Whatever you put in is going to come out. How's that go with computers? G-I-G-O. G-I-G-O. That's the one. Garbage in, garbage out. Well, we're like computers, aren't we? Good stuff in, good stuff comes out. Amen. The word of God is good. The word of God is good. He wants us to harness our mouths. This is spiritual warfare. And God wants you to become people of the spirit. In the book of John, I'll finish off with this. He said, you're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Amen. Abide in me and I in you as the branch can't bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Abide in God and let that word come out of you, will you? What did he say in John 6? He said, it's the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. That man could have shut down the pornographic mouth he was listening to or he could change what was happening by blessing the man and releasing life by the spirit. Amen. I want to tell you, some of you, we've all, I don't know about you, but something happens to Christians when they come into the kingdom of God. They come become self-righteous. Oh, I hate saying it. Oh, I'm not going to hate it. <laughs> I'm going to say prigs. <laughs> P-R-I-G-S. <laughs> They become self-righteous, stuck-up people. <laughs> and they stink. <laughs> Amen. But that happens to Christians when they come into the kingdom of God. They become so self-righteous that they're of no earthly good to God. <laughs> and God says, you came out of the same things. You came out of exactly the same stuff. So don't look down on them and try to clean them before they come into the kingdom. I'm a fisherman. I know you've got to catch fish and get them in the boat before you can start cleaning them, otherwise you're underwater. <laughs> Is that right? you got, you got to catch the fish to clean them. Now I've got to tell you, sometimes you've got to go to where they are. Do you realise that? You've got to sit there... I get, I, I, when I hear guys mouthing off badly, it grates my spirit. But I know that if I interfere, I'm stopping what God wants because somewhere in the interaction, God's going to give me something for them because my mouth is a ready weapon for God. Amen. 
It's a ready weapon for God. My mouth is always ready to answer what God's saying. I, I was in, I was in uh, Singapore with a man who'd written a book on the coming financial disaster. I don't, God just links me up with people. I, don't, I can never understand it. All I know is his hands on it. And I, I just arrived in Singapore and some of the pastors I know there took me to this dinner because the who's who of Singapore were all going to this place. The financial institution people, unsaved mainly in the main, were going to this place to listen to what this man had to say because he'd written a book that year and released it and by the end of the year everything he'd spoken about in that book came to pass. So he became a, a guide for these people with no, with no uh, knowledge of what was happening but were fearful of what was happening. So they all gathered. It was like the who's who of the financial institutions and the churches. And there was a seat in that place that was vacant. It was right next to me. I'd arrived late but so had this guest speaker. And he came and sat next to me. And next thing they introduced him and up he stands. I'm going, oh, I'm shocked here. I'm standing next to the guy who's about to speak. And I think I had Billy Pryor was with me and Williams sitting on the table. And we happened to be on this speaker's table. And he turned around to me after he finished and he opened it up for answers and questions. He said, um, he said are there any questions? on what he's spoken about. And now he was speaking about fiscal pol uh, policy and stuff that was just straight over the top of my head. I wouldn't have had a clue. <laughs> it was financial gobbledygook to me, you know. And, and so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, hey, I'm really blessed to have been invited here. The dinner is fantastic. <laughs> so I was more interested in the food than the food coming out of his mouth. And... Um, he turned around to me, he must, have, he must have sensed that. But he turned around to me and said, well, Ozzy, he said, what have you got to say about it all? I can't. Mate, I hardly listened to what he said. <laughs> I, had to concentrate. <laughs> I had to concentrate on what he was talking about. And uh, I said, um, well, I can tell you what God says about what you've been talking about. And I'm hoping, oh, I've got this right. <laughs> And I said, godliness with contentment is great gain. And that's what God says to you. He pulled his glasses off and he started weeping. He looked at me. <laughs> he said, oh my God. He said, I'm almost through my second book. And he said, I've been waiting for the last chapter. He said, I actually prayed that God would speak to me and give me my last chapter of my last book. He said, you've just given it to me. And he's bawling his eyes out. And he says, would you, would you come to my meeting tonight? And I said, well, I've said I've got a meeting myself during the day. I said, well, I'll come and sit in when I can. So I did. I came and sat in with him. And God used us while that man was there. But it just highlighted to me that he puts you in places and he gives you the right word at the right time. He will put what you need in your mouth. You don't have to worry what you're going to say. If you have filled up and spent time with the Lord, you're going to be a ready weapon for God. And he'll use you. The word of God is always about his word. He said, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. What about the one in Matthew that says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Your words are blessings when they line up with what God's asking you to do. You've just got to be open to use your mouth and speak godly wisdom in the people's lives. Godly wisdom. you get answers. You will get answers. Everybody's looking for the supernatural whiz-bang new beauty, and so am I. But you know, sometimes we miss what he's doing at that level of his spirit where he's actually blessing people 
and they're having miracles and you don't get to hear about them but they're happening anyway. Last week there was a man in here, I had a word of knowledge, I spoke it out, he phoned me during the week, he said, did you know that was my problem? I said, yes, I did. He said, because I got healed. <laughs> no. See, people don't realise what's happening in a meeting, but the spirit's still moving. And this place in particular has an incredible presence of God because it was one in prayer. There was a battle over this place. We contended with the enemy and we won. And so there's an authority in this place. I don't know if, if you don't sense it, you get into some prayer. Ask the Lord to show you what's here because there's an open heaven in this place. There's an open heaven. People need answers to prayers. They can come here and pray and God will answer their prayers. We've had all sorts of things in this place that just blow my mind when I stop and think about it. We've had power beams. That little hut over there, there's a couple of spots there that if you stand in them, you're going to get an outpouring of God on your life. Just because you're standing in that spot. Because heaven was opened up on that spot through prayer and through healings. And if you want an exercise on how sensitive you are to God, I recommend you go over there and see if you can find them. They've got a spot here in this place that's absolutely just raw power pouring into it and you don't even, if you might walk past and go, oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you, I've got, a, I've got some weird things I've done over the years. But one of them is I buried a brick out of Amy Semple McPherson's Miracle Church in the floor of this place. And I know every time I walk past it, I'm sensitised to it. I sense that wonderful anointing. So when I'm feeling dry, I know where to go. I go and get myself in the posse where I know heaven's been opened up. We've opened up heaven on the line here as well. We've been in churches where we've done that. All over this country we've done that, haven't we, Ness? Sometimes two or three times in every state. We... All I want to say to you is there's power in what you do and what you speak. It's always through your mouth. Your mouth is the centre of spiritual warfare in the universe you live in. And if only you understood that. So from now on, harness your mouth and speak well. If you can't speak well, just shut up. If someone grates you, just say nothing. Understand they're in want. <laughs> They have a need. Amen. I think we've had enough, don't you? Praise God. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord. We're going to have some communion. Can we do that? Thank you, Father. Did you get a feed this morning? The word of God. That's all you need. Coming out of your own mouth. You can bless yourself. You know your mountain has ears to hear your voice, says the Lord. I'm going to prophesy over you, can I? God wants to bring change in your life. He wants to bring it dramatically and he wants to make you know who you are and what's there. And he says, your mountain has ears to hear your mouth and hear the words that come out of your mouth. He's heard your prayers and they're being answered already. It's going to bring change. He has heard your prayers. Praise God. Right, and you, you've been, I'm not going to say it publicly. I'll tell you after what he's telling me, okay? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. He's going he's gonna to do it. Oh, he's going to do it. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Go Ramasia Carabas in the Rebu Saraya. Ramando Kiribu Sandarabaraya Carabas. Wonderful, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Belly, change is coming. Change is coming. Incredible change is coming. So you've, you've walked in this, you've walked side by side with Cheryl and with us here and our change is coming. And he's going to change the way we do things. He's going to change, he's going to change your outlook. Oh, glory to God. What you've learnt, you know. Now he's going to teach you stuff you don't know, says the Lord. <laughs> he's going to bring you to a place of stuff you don't know. He's going to do it and he's going to do it quickly. And in your obedience of hearing what he's saying. God says he's going to bring miraculous 
miraculous turning arounds in your life and turning arounds in the people you touch. Oh, glory to God. He's bringing it swiftly. He's bringing it quickly. In fact, you're in the middle of it one step at a time, says the Lord. You've had an inkling, but God says now he's going to make it very clear to you. There's a change of direction that's coming, a change of direction. Your focus is going to be so different, says the Lord. Praise God. As a matter of fact, I see this. I see, I see prayer has been touching your life. Oh, glory to God. Prayer has been touching your life. Your wife has been walking on a high level. And she says she's looked down and she's seen you walking through a swamp. Is that correct, Shirley? Is that correct, Shirley? Leave him alone at the moment, Joan. She, praise God. Thank you, Father. You're breaking the. You break this, please, God. Thank you, Lord. God says you've been walking at a high level, and you've looked down and you've seen him walking in a swamp at times, trying to see where to go. And you've watched this, and you've been saying, "Get him out of the swamp." And this has actually been a prayer, says the Lord. Am I right? It's exactly the picture you see. Is that what you saw? He was in the swamp while you were at a, a, a higher level ground, says the Spirit of God. And he says, he is now on the up path. God says there is about to come a change because of your prayers. You too are a blessing to the body of Christ and you will become a greater blessing. And not because of money, but because of what you speak, says the Lord. He's about to change everything in the way you approach things because he's teaching us some new things. Oh, you've been praying for this change. You've been praying for it particularly. And God, the Spirit of God says it's on its way. And you can take that to the bank. Father, I bless these two. I bless them like you wouldn't believe, Father God. Could you, can we just bless these people, can we? Thank you, Lord. There's a blessing going to be poured through you. <laughs> They're going to be poured through you, says the Lord. That blessing is being poured through you in a greater measure than you could ever have imagined, says the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, th thanks, John. Sorry, I made the spirit of prophecy do it. It's okay, you're doing a job. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well done. I'll take two grapes. Oh, yeah. One because I'm thirsty. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, as we come to this communion table, thank you, Lord. As we come to this communion table, Father, thank you, Lord. We thank you that it's your provision to heal us today. This is your provision for our healing today. And Father, we bless every person as we take this communion today, Father. We bless you for coming and having paid the price for us. And that we can do nothing without you and we remember that as we come to this table, Lord. That, Father, we want to allow your Holy Spirit to use us as powerful, powerful weapons to bring revival, Father, to this country. We ask this in Jesus' name and take hold of this bread understanding the price you paid. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. And I ask you to wash us clean as we take and scrape, Father. Accepting the cleansing of the blood of Christ in our life today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray some prayers over this community. You know, I'm just realising we live in Middleton. There's only probably about three, three people or four people that actually come from Middleton into this church. All the rest come from everywhere else. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So I want to start blessing Middleton. I want, I want to do something this man did. He blessed out of that place of refuge he spoke prayers that said, 
I, I don't think it was called Abergavenny, but it's close enough. It was a Welsh thing. And he, he says, Abergavenny blesses, and he blessed his area. And what he saw was every life in that town starting to change. They were blessed. Their sheep ended up with triplets and quadruplets. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> The businesses were blessed. The people were blessed. Families were blessed with restoration. Amen. And all they did as a congregation, and I want to do this every time we meet, I want to do this. Please remind me to do this, will you? Say, Ramoth Gilead blesses the south coast with salvation, with healing, with deliverance, with changed lives. Knowing God. Amen. Amen. And Father, we speak this today. Ramoth Gilead blesses Middleton. And Father, we'll have an influx of surfers pouring into this place. <laughs> and footballers. <laughs> and anything else. Anybody else you want to bring into this place. But Middleton is generally a surfing population. And um, I just thank you that now you're going to start drawing them by the power of your spirit as we bless them. We ask, Lord, for souls to come into this place for salvation. We've already got enough Christians in here who, who know you, Lord. But, Father, use our mouths and harness our mouths for salvation of this south coast. And we bless this south coast. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we bless Adelaide too. And we bless this country. We bless the leadership of this country. And we pray that they open their eyes and see their condition so we can get rid of this coronavirus. That they would not just go by what doctors are telling them who are ruining this country at the time. But they would go by what you say, Lord, as you speak to the leadership in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless this country. We bless the folk who are running it. We bless them with good decisions. We bless them in Jesus' name. We speak blessing over them by the blood of the Lamb. And we give you thanks and honour <laughs> and glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. That's it for the day, I think. Oh, the bucket. That's right. Hi, you guys. Yeah. Well, 